What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another fantasy football video. This one's going to be the top 10 overall rankings, and again, if you're watching this in like August, then this probably isn't the video for you. Go to a mock draft video, or just go to the overall rankings video, because um, we're going to be doing the standard and PPR top like 65, breaking down all those players, but right now it's just the top 10 overall. This list PPR, but as I go over it, I'm going to be talking about each player, but I'm going to be talking about how it's different for standard scoring. Um, for half point PPR, it's just kind of like a mixture, and really it's more towards the PPR aspect than the standard, even though it's in the middle, but it's pretty much just a mixture of the two. Um, again, also, you can visit our website, website if you ever want to download uh, these rankings right to your computer, or if you just want to see an updated version, because again, late May, if you're watching this in June, we might not have the top 65 up, but if you want to see updated rankings, just go there, thefantasyfootballadvice.com, um, it's in the description, and I'll throw it on the screen here as well, um, that's just going to give you the basic rankings, so it's just going to be a list like this, by position and by scoring format, standard versus PPR, um, but I'll also have like quarterbacks uh, and defense up there. Also, if you want to get the premium rankings for your drafts, those are going to have uh, player notes, they're going to have injury ratings, they're going to have every player breaking into tiers, they're going to have projections, they're going to have top 10 people you can take late for each position, all that stuff. It's, it's a monster, monster package that you can get. I mean, if you get this, like, it's going to put you ahead of your draft. Because, like, I know a lot of you know players up until, like, the eighth round, but then you kind of get a little shaky, and you can win your leagues by nailing your late round picks. So if you're really struggling late, or you just want one source where you just have everything you possibly need to know about all these players to make great informed decisions, get that rankings, um, and you can view that on the website as well. So we're going to hop into this. At number one, it's David Johnson. Again, this is PPR. For standard, it's Zeke, and I'll talk about why when I get to Zeke. But David Johnson is number one for me in PPR, basically because I know he, he's the touchdown guy. Like, you look last year, 20 touchdowns, 1,200 rushing yards, 80 receptions. Like, every single week, you're like, yeah, he's probably going to get me a touchdown. He's probably going to grab me, like, five balls. It's just his floor was just so safe. And the reason he's ahead of Bell in PPR scoring is because... And, and in standard scoring as well. But in PPR scoring, um, they're both similar in receptions. If you could tell me both of them were going to be healthy the entire year, Bell does have a higher projection for receptions. Bell is more involved in the offense and the receiving aspect. It's that you can't tell me that Bell is going to play all these games. Um, he's just super injury prone. And I'm not going to say David Johnson isn't an injury risk because the volume that he's going to receive, because remember, he is the focal point of the offense, Yes, Larry Fitz is going to be there, and I think Larry Fitz is a great pick later in drafts, but David Johnson's the guy. Like, they're going to feed him, and every single week, as long as he's healthy, he's top three. I don't care what the matchup is, he's top three. So it's just, it's, it's so nice knowing that. And he did get hurt at the end of last year, but it wasn't a major injury. He's going to be completely fine now. Um, could this outlook have been different if that injury had happened in week five? Yes, it could have. If he'd missed like four weeks from that, which we don't really know because they don't have to tell us the extent of injuries at the end of the year. So we don't really know the extent of that injury, how long he would have been out. But we have to look at it from the fact that he hasn't really missed time, whereas Bell has missed a good amount of time. So he's number one in um, PPR scoring. Again, he's only 25, so he's not up there in age at all. Focal point of the offense. Danny Thompson, you go to playerprofiler.com. That's his most comparable player. I mean, that's how good this guy is. Second in red zone carries, second in evaded tackles, little backs in yardage, touchdowns, receptions. It's He's just such a safe pick. So he's my number one, followed very closely by Bell. Um, but again, Zeke is one in standard, which would make Bell three in standard. Um, he played four less games than David Johnson, and yet he still had a good amount more rushing yards. 157 all-purpose yards per game. I believe it was a little over 100 rushing and then around 50 receiving. If you take out, or if you add in, I guess, um, those first four, or those four games that he missed, I believe three were uh, suspension and then he was rested in week 17 for the playoffs. Put in performances from all of those weeks 
in uh, as to what he was averaging, and it's 1,690 rushing yards, 100 receptions, 821 receiving, and 12 touchdowns. Now, could he have gotten hurt in those weeks? Yes, but the pace that he was on were monster numbers. That, that would have been the sixth best performance all time by a running back, and I mean, <laughs> that's pretty nice to have. I don't really care what draft capital you're giving up. If you're getting the chance for that, I have no problem with him, number one. Like, anyone in any scoring format that says, you know what, I just prefer Bell over DJ. I prefer Bell over Zeke. I prefer Zeke over Bell. I don't care. Like, you can take them in any order you want, and I will fault you zero. For me, it's DJ, then Bell, then Zeke, because of the injury concerns with Bell, and Zeke, it's the receptions. I get to that now. It's, like, he, he can catch the ball. It's that... They just don't throw to him much on third down. Third down is a lot of Cole Beasley for some reason. And they had Lance Dunbar. I want to say he's on the Rams now. But they just don't use Zeke a ton in the receiving game. And when you're going to have 50 less receptions projection-wise than these two guys ahead of him. And that's projection-wise. He On pace for a 16-game season, I mean, there's a chance that he has 60 or 70 less receptions than Bell if Bell to stay healthy. So that's a lot of points. But... He's super secure in the, obviously in the first and second down roll, but in the red zone, they don't really pull him out much unless he's, unless they're like super high up and he's already got like two rushing touchdowns, but he's secure in that like 12 to 17, 18 touchdown roll. Like there aren't many guys you can project that many touchdowns for. And that's why he's very safe in that um, top three range ahead of the next guy I'm going to talk about in Antonio Brown, but I want to just stay on Zeke for a second. He was 21 last year. You got to remember rookies. Yes, you can target rookie running backs, but it is a like the NFL is a hard transition to make. So the fact that he was able to get over 1600 rushing yards, again, the line is slightly worse, just slightly, but it's still going to, it's still a top three offensive line. So also looking at the fact that they have a really difficult uh, passing schedule, um, they're going to have to lean on Zeke. And they can. They can give him a ton of carries. The kid's like 22. I mean, they can feed this guy. He doesn't have a lot of mileage. He's fresh. He hasn't been injured. I mean, he's just a very, very safe pick. He's my number one in standard, again, like I said, but number three in PPR. And we move down to Antonio Brown. And the reason um, in previous years I had him one, I have no problem again if you take him one. The only thing is... After the research I've done this offseason, it is significantly more important to hit on a top five uh, running back than a top five wide receiver. And that's just what's putting me over the edge of, I know if DJ Bell, Zeke, if any of them stay healthy, I know they're top five for a fact. Like it is undisputed. They are a top five running back if they stay healthy for at least, honestly, 13 games. So because the value is there so much more and because I can find wide receivers late, that's why I'm putting him down here. But if you want, I mean, he had a down year last year at 106 receptions, 1284 and 12 touchdowns. Like that's a down year for him. You know, he's going to be a stud. So if you want to take him one, go for it. Um, I think he's the only other person you can argue one. You can't argue Odell or Julio at one. Uh, so there's really only four people. In standard, there's no way I can I can do that. In standard scoring, you have to take those three running backs ahead of him. In PPR, though, I'm fine with taking him one. I just wouldn't do it. Um, well, I mean, over the past four seasons, he's averaged 120 receptions, almost 1,600 yards, almost 11 touchdowns. His floor is 12, right? I mean, his floor every week in a PPR scoring format is 12 points. And that's just so nice to have, especially if you're in a bonus league. I mean, he gets that 100-yard bonus so many times that He's unarguably one. I mean, he is the number one wide receiver, and you just can't argue that because you go down to Julio, and that's who I have next. The The thing is, like, I don't really understand why they don't use Julio in the red zone, but they don't, and it's not something – it's something that, like, we looked early in his career, and we're like, maybe that'll change, you know, maybe when Roddy White leaves. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like that's changing, so – even though he had 1,409 receiving yards and six touchdowns, he still really wasn't, I mean, that's that's sixth. Even with 1,409 yards, that's sixth in both standard and PPR. And could he improve upon that? Yeah, I mean, I think he was banged up a little bit. I'm not sure he missed any games, but he does seem to get banged up a lot. And 
although he missed some time, I don't think you can really project any player over 1,500 yards. Like, that's that's a difficult projection to make. So if he gets 1,406 touchdowns, you're like, wow, he had a great year, but that's still six. So taking him one, I just can't do just because of the um, non-usage in the red zone and the injury concerns. I mean, Brown does has zero injury concerns. The injury concern for Brown would actually be his quarterback, but I think Julio is much more of a risk than Brown, and he doesn't offer the same upside as far as touchdowns. So that's why I have him below. And then I have bel um, below him is Odell. And that, that would be sixth overall for PPR. That's the point we're at right now. And I have him fifth for standard just because of, again, the touchdowns. I think you can project Odell's touchdowns higher. Um, last year, 101 receptions, almost 14, well, not almost 14, 1367 and 10 touchdowns. I think 10 touchdowns is a good projection for him. They did bring in Marshall, but I don't think that that hurts him in the touchdown aspect a great amount. I think that Marshall is going to help them move the ball a little more, which even though if Marshall takes a few touchdowns away, I think they may have more opportunities for touchdowns, which will then add to it. What I think it hurts is his yardage. You see the graph on the right here. Maybe it's hard to see, but this is Odell's production when he receives eight or less targets. And I think that's what we need to be looking at. It's not some of these games in here. He had a touchdown or two. It's the yardage. The yardage when Odell is heavily targeted is massive. Like he can get 150, he can get 200 yards. When he gets eight or less targets, this is over his career. 90 is the most. And then it's 73, 64, a bunch of 40s, a 50, a couple of 20s. Like when he doesn't get a ton of targets, he doesn't perform as well. And you see that when we when we play DFS. If you look at a game where Odell's not going to be targeted a lot, you don't play him because he needs the targets to do good. And I think that Marshall's going to take targets away. I think Evan Ingram's going to take targets away. Not a lot, again, but it's some. I mean, they weren't targeting Victor Cruz that much. They still have Sterling Shepard. So I don't think in PPR scoring and standard, there's even a, a case for him above Antonio. I think in standard, just because of those touchdowns, he'll be ahead of Julio. But once you go to PPR, I do think that Julio has the edge over Odell because of the upside in yardage and receptions. I do think that Odell takes a step back and Julio takes a step forward in the receptions category. It's just the touchdowns that do it for me for Odell over Julio in standard. So now we move to Mike Evans and up and down with the uh, touchdowns. That's why I always say touchdowns are very difficult to project. Started with 12 as a rookie, then he went to three. And then he went back up to 12. And I, I think the 3 was more the aberration than the 12. Is he going to get 12 again this year with um, OJ Howard and with Deshaun Jackson? Yeah, he certainly could. I would say 8 to 12 is more of like a good projection for him. So if he gets 10, that's pretty much what you should be expecting. The targets are going to go down. But I'm a firm believer that the quality of targets because of Deshaun Jackson and because of OJ Howard is going to go up. So... Last year, they had absolutely no one. Cameron Brate's not that good. Don't think that he's that good because of the um, receptions and yardage and everything. It was that everyone was dying around him. Every single player on that offense for tight ends, for uh, wide receivers, for running backs, they were all getting hurt. And he had to throw to someone. Like, Winston has to throw the ball to someone besides Mike Evans. Like, he was trying to throw to Mike Evans every play, but you've got to throw to someone else at some point. So I think that Although the overall, um, overall in his career, he's been he's been docked for being you know a low catch rate, high drop rate. Like, yeah, he has a low catch rate because some of these targets are really hard to catch. I mean, when you're the only weapon in offense, it's difficult to get quality targets. When you add good pieces, yeah, Winston's gonna have other people to throw to, but when he throws to Evans, they're gonna be better targets. They're gonna be easier to catch. So. I think the receptions will come down. I do believe that. The defense is getting better. Um, but maybe it comes down to like 90. Maybe his yardage um, stays about the same though because I think that the quality is going to be there. And the touchdowns, I mean, that's really not going to change. It's not like Deshaun Jackson's a huge red zone threat. So could you project him at 90 catches, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns? That's still a great year. 
So I I think that it is a slightly concerning that he tailed off at the end of last year when their defense improved. But the guy's averaging 1,209 touchdowns. He's going to be heavily involved. So could you take the next guy I'm going to talk about ahead of him? Yes. Um, would I move him ahead of um, the big three in Brown, Julio, Odell? No. So I think this is basically the highest he can be at seventh um, and fourth for wide receivers. But I think this is a good projection for him. You look at the next guy, A.J. Green. Started his career five straight 1,000-yard seasons before, essentially, I jinxed him last year. I was all over him. And there was a good reason to be all over him. I mean, he was he was doing really, really well. He was on pace for 1,542 yards, only six touchdowns. But again, touchdowns are fluky. You could have had some two-touchdown games towards the end. He was doing great. And then he got hurt, which is really unfortunate. And it's something that he's only missed 10 games over a six-year career. It's just the timing has been horrible. He's had terrible timings with these injuries. It's always been towards the fantasy playoffs and when people needed him the most. But that's what people remember, right? It's not that he's massively injury prone. It's that people remember getting screwed by him late in the year. So, I mean, look, 10 games over six years. That's not that many. So it's not that he's super injury prone. It's that people remember things. People have recency bias. He is a great pick. If you can get him in like the late first, early second, that is a steal. If you somehow managed to get him in the early second round in a PPR league, it's an absolute steal. Yes, Eifert hurts his touchdown upside. Yes, I think Mixon's a great running back, but I think that's going to help him. Could they target the running backs more with like Mixon and Bernard? Yeah, but I think it's going to be basically the same as it has been in uh, previous years. Um, I think they improved a little bit on offense, not a ton. They did lose uh, their, I believe, left tackle in uh, Wentworth. I, I might be pronouncing it wrong. I don't remember. But I knew that he's a, he was a good left tackle, and they lost him. So I believe the Rams. So that's going to take a step back, but that impl- uh, impacts more the rushing aspect, not the receiving aspect. I think that they're just going to use him. He's, he's A.J. Green. Like, you've got to remember, this is A.J. Green. He's a great wide receiver. So don't be concerned with the don't be concerned at all about the injury last year. It's not something that's going to carry over. It was a significant hamstring injury. So if in camp... He's got the same hamstring injury, like he re-aggravates it. Yeah, you're majorly concerned. I'm probably not drafting him. But as long as nothing happens like that, he's a full run, I'm fine with drafting him because I think you're going to get him at, um, like the same DFS, suppressed ownership when someone gets hurt. I think that he's going to be um, have suppressed ownership, which is going to drive down his ADP into the second round. And remember, it's all about risk and reward. I think that in the mid-first round, it's a little bit more risk than I'm comfortable with. But in the late first, early second, I don't think there's much risk there at all. So next guy, LaShawn McCoy, he comes in at ninth overall in PPR scoring, essentially because, um, and look at what he did last year. 1267 rushing yards, 51 receptions on 58 targets, 356 receiving yards, 14 touchdowns. I mean, Gillisley's gone. So... Gillisley took a lot of touchdowns because he's one of the best red zone running backs in the league, which is why I'm really high on him this year from the Patriots, but he's gone. He has no one. No one is challenging Sean McCoy for targets or for uh, carries and really targets out of the backfield. Watkins should be healthy, I guess. I mean, recording this in May, he's healthy, but he hasn't reported to camp yet. I mean, he gets hurt every single year. I don't think Zay Jones is really any impact to Sean McCoy. I mean... He essentially replaces Robert Woods, so that's not um, it's gonna be the same as last year. I just think with no one challenging him for targets, with him returning to the red zone back, because remember, Gillespie was actually really the red zone back last year, you can project him again at a ton of receptions, a ton of touchdown upside, good yardage upside. I think he's a very, very, very good pick this year, someone I'm really high on, I think higher than most people on. I mean, he's my fourth rated running back, so I love the pick. Ninth overall in PPR scoring, perfectly fine with that. Could you see me move him ahead of AJ Green and honestly Mike Evans? Maybe. Right now, I, I like those guys a little bit more because I just I just like wide receivers. I think it's um it's a good position to have an elite player at. But I think LaShawn McCoy, I think this is like the last year, probably, where he's top five, but I think he can be top five again this year. And again, super important to hit on a top five running back. Last guy is Devonta Freeman, and in standard scoring, um, there is a difference here. I don't have Freeman. I have 
one of Dez and Jordy. I haven't decided yet. Both of them have pretty much the same touchdown projection. It's that Dez has a very difficult schedule this coming year. Um, and I haven't really looked at Jordy's schedule, but it's not as difficult, I know, as Dez's. So right now, I think Jordy is 10th overall in standard scoring. But in PPR, it's got to be Freeman. He only had uh, a little under 1,100 rushing yards. Still had 54 receptions, 464 receiving yards, 13 touchdowns. So that's the thing. Back-to-back -back years of 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns. He's going to get the touchdowns. He's going to get the receptions. It's the same thing with McCoy. I just think that everything's like slightly lower. Like I think that the reception projection is slightly lower. I think the rushing projection is slightly lower. Actually, a decent amount lower. Probably like two, 300 yards. Um, the touchdowns are going to be about the same. So that's why McCoy is ahead of them. And again, it's not like Freeman um, doesn't have competition. He does have Coleman, although I believe that Coleman isn't a threat to take his job. I just think Coleman's there and they're going to use him. Whereas McCoy, I mean, they don't have anyone else to take. It's, it's really the touchdowns with Coleman. Coleman has two touchdowns, three touchdown upside every time he takes the field. So no one else on the Bills has that. That's why McCoy is ahead. But Freeman, I still think, is a great pick. He's only 25. I prefer him in the second round. I, I know that this projection has him 10th overall, which is a late first round pick. I don't I can't see myself taking him this early. Because remember, you have to look at ADP versus um ranking. It's not that this is my personal ADP that if these guys, everyone ahead of him is taken, I take Freeman. I, you have to look at the value provided by the ADP. If he's if someone's going in the fourth round and you have him ranked the second round pick, don't take him in the second round. Take him in the late third round. Take him in the early fourth round. Because as soon as you take them in the second round, now they have to return second round value. So I think Freeman can return first round value, and that's why I have him ranked this high. I just think he's more likely to return second round value, and I'm probably more likely to take a guy like Jordy in the early first and then take Freeman after that. But again, ADPs are all going to change, and you have to look at that as it's actually happening during your drafts. So that's the end of this video. That's the top 10 rankings that I personally have right now for PPR. Again, it's slightly different for standard scoring. Um, in standard, we've got Elliott number one, then DJ, then Bell, then Antonio Brown, Odell, Julio Jones, um, Mike Evans and AJ Green are really close. I still have the same, so I'd still do Evans, then AJ Green. Then I have McCoy, although I could be swayed to have McCoy over Evans and Green. And then it's right now one of Jordy Nelson and Des Bryant, but I think it's going to be Jordy Nelson. So that is the end of this video. If you guys want to see our most recent rankings, again, go to the website. Just see when it was updated. You can download that to your computer. If you want the premium rankings, which I highly recommend getting, sign up for that on the site. It's going to have you absolutely dominating your draft. But that's the end of this video, and thanks for watching.